This is Jeremiah. We're on number 23 now. We just finished Polonov and Basov. Mr. Leaves and Mr. Muddy Rivers. So we're done with those two gentlemen. Now we're going to get into Claude Monet and we're going to get into Mikolov. Um, I call him Mr. There. And um, something Ninko. I forgot how to pronounce his first name. Anyway. At the risk of butchering it, let's just call him Mikolov. And of course, I'm a big fan of Mikolov. Now, I'm, I'm a little bigger fan of Mon Monet because he has a lot of personality. Um, we talk about personality here. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We're going to get into Painters of His Glory, or also known as Popcorn and Beauty. And we're going to get into Painters of His Glory, where we spend time looking at some famous artworks. And I talk about the art just a little. And this is a very short uh, lesson from this ministry. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. And we're rejoicing together with you in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is also called the Blessed Hope, which is our chief crown of rejoicing. And we're continuing to do so as we are Protestant Christians here. And we are Protestants who are into sound doctrine. Any other cartoon is not going to happen here. So if you're looking for... Basic sound doctrine, according to the King James Bible, you may have come to the right place. Let's get into painters. Now, we're getting into painters, uh, and I'm, I'm, this, is, this is the halfway mark, roughly, of all of the painters. The remainder of these painters will be done in brevity. Um, I, I see myself taking my time on maybe Kromi, Kromskoy, maybe De Blas, Latour, uh, Gilbert, And that's about it. Everyone else will be seen in brevity here. Um, uh, and, and that's going to be the way it's going to go. I think I'm going to spend more time on Kromi, Ivan Kromskoy, and maybe Gilbert. And those are the people that I have left to spend more time on. And uh, Kromskoy is into heavy realism, a beautiful painter, and uh, Gilbert is what I call Mr. Fran, Vive la France, Mr. Rue Flora, or how do you say flowers in France, I forgot, florist, but um, he's heavy into flowers and shopping in, in uh, France, of course, uh, along the flowers and so forth. Um, we're going to spend a little time on him. Uh, he's one of my favorites. But the rest of them are going to go through like butter. Uh, the rest of them, okay? Maybe a little bit on Degas a little bit. Uh, I've always been a fan of Mr. Edgar Degas, but these are people that we're going to look at, and we're going to we're, we're going to listen to some music, and we're going to look at their paintings here in what we call semi-high definition or something here, and we're going to enjoy looking at them as we look at the qualities that these different painters are sharing with us and I call these the painters of his glory. It's very unusual for a Bible teacher to look at paintings and then give you scriptures and hymns. I'm going to do that. Uh, this will be, I will finish this next weekend, uh, right about the time May comes. When May comes, uh, when May arrives, we will probably look into pictures for the rest of the duration. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We are rejoicing in the coming of our Lord, and we are looking forward. He is coming for those who love his appearing, and we do indeed love his appearing. This is Jeremiah, let's get going. This is from A, if you're looking for it on the playlist, and this is Popcorn and Beauty, and it is Painters of His Glory, the effulgence of his being. That's what you're looking at when you see order, beauty, and peace, you're looking at Jesus Christ. And, that, and that's what I want to bring home here. We go through scriptures and we point out certain things and different characteristics of various artists here and i am a paint a landscape seascape guy i will be looking at a lot of flowers and fruits uh soon uh, and uh, people like adon or albert some of these guys are indoor outdoor people and uh, very interesting painters and we'll look at that and talk about them just quickly just you know we, we don't i don't have a lot of time for this uh, i decided to get go through my collection and share it with you okay 
And that's what we're doing, and I'm enjoying. We have some music ready. We have some scriptures ready to go as we get going. And I am just happy to be here as we are listening to the voice of the Lord. My sheep, they hear my voice. And we hear his voice, and it is the voice of love. It is the voice of honesty. And this is what we are doing. We're growing in in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And by the mercies of God, we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And we are doing that now. And that is done by let this mind be in you. This ministry will push you letting this mind be in you. And that is living bread minded. Okay, now let's move on as we get into the paintings. And I'm very happy to say we're half, I'm halfway done. I, I've really enjoyed looking at the paintings that I, I think I rarely get a chance to look, look at. This is in my collection. Uh, this is a Bible teaching ministry. We have no monies here. We never have any money here or any, any, any monetary, anything at all. So this is an educational institution, and we have certain uh, liberties. We have uh, 101 strings that's allowed us to use their videos of their music, which is absolutely beautiful music. 99% uh, of the people who come here, they enjoy that. They're not really here for Bible study per se. However, what's wonderful about that is it opens them up to sound doctrine and living bread. That if any man eat what we're giving them now, they will never see death. So that's the point, okay? That's the, what we call a come on or clickbait or whatever you want to call it. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Yes, we, we've been busy pretty much all day. Uh, a long nap for me, but let's get going as we have Isaiah 1 open. That's where I'm headed for my own personal lesson work, Isaiah chapter 1. Now, as far as you're concerned, we, we, we're going to be bouncing all over the place. We're, we're doing a good job getting you ready this year for Psalms and Proverbs, father and son combination. Um, that is coming along nicely. And uh, Isaiah, of course, like this open to, is my next book that I have to start hammering. We went through Isaiah earlier. We have to go through it again. And as many of you know, Isaiah is the cornerstone, basically, of your entire Bible. It's where all your messianic promises are and things of this nature. So let's get going. Um, we have Monet here. Now, let's talk a little bit about Monet as we get some music ready here. Uh, let's play, um, what do we have? Alas, and did my Savior bleed when we walk with the Lord, which is also called trust and obey. I, I put down when we walk with the Lord. It's actually trust and obey, if my memory is correct. As I become even more familiar with these hymns that I have versions of. Okay? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Okay, now you can find this under C in this ministry, where I have hymns, okay? Where you can start becoming familiar with hymns. I have 30 of the most popular in the history of the United States up right now. I'm going to probably add five this year and really go through what Americans have held dearest to their hearts pertaining to we who are Quakers, okay? To be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey, okay? Now, it's very interesting. I have Polonov up there for this song. And uh, what an in interesting painting who we just left off. That was our last painter here. I call him Mr. Leaves. Uh, he, he, has a, he has a very good, beautiful job on leaves and trees. He's, he, I don't have very many paintings of him, but I like him a lot. I'm, I'm a big fan of Mr. Vasily Polonov. And we're a fan of him glorifying Jesus. Remember, these painters, they're glorifying Jesus. And they may not know it, but they're painting the mind of God, which is beauty and order. When you have beauty and order and peace, you have Jesus. The reason why you're looking at beauty is because the plants are in order. They're doing exactly what the Lord has commanded them to do. When, when everything does what God tells it to do, then everything is preserved. Okay? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. Okay, let's get going. As we listen to Trust and Obey, and I have uh, George D. up here, 
who I rate, uh, we, we went through George D. He's number eight on my list. I call him Mr. Stormy C. For those of you interested in those paintings, you know, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy getting into my expose of famous landscape and seascape painters. And we're going to start getting into fruit and plants and so forth. Um, indoor people, just a little. Some of my favorite painters are indoor, outdoor people. They, they do both. They, they, they can do anything. Very interesting painters. Some of them are not, not that well known, like Adon, Louis, 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 and uh, uh, Edelfeld Albert, Mr. Albert. Um, uh, we'll get into them later and I'll show them. We'll go into them. Of course, you have to have a tour if, if you're a, an art teacher. I, I don't know how you get away from him. There, there's a lot of beautiful fruit painters, but he's one of the best. And, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I call him Mr. Still Life. Let's go as we get into Monet now. Let's talk about Monet for a moment as we go right through these guys. I have Monet and I have uh, Mikolov ready to go. And that's 24, 23, 25. And then I'll throw in 24 probably out of order here. That's okay. As long as we have all three of them, 23, 24, and 25 respectively in this painter list. Okay? And you can click them if you like those particular guys. Now, of course, the, the main goal here, of course, is to let the scriptures speak to the painting. Uh, as you know, these are original painters. If you paint by numbers, you can paint anything online now. Uh, all of these skills are available for almost anyone, and uh, to some to some extent. But to see these painters here, they're original, everything, colors and everything, this is what we're here for, okay? Let's move on. And trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. What does that mean? That means to put your confidence in reality, put your confidence in wisdom, put your confidence in that which is beneficial for you, which is pleasing the Lord and doing that which is beneficial for you. You know, trust in the profitable way, and that's the only way that you're going to be happy. You must align yourself to the commandments of Jesus Christ. You must align yourself to perfect submission. You must align yourself to becoming a merciful person and growing in that grace and being a merciful person and being a person who embraces truth and hates evil. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to hate sin. And that's what we're developing. We're developing a hatred of harm, sin, and dishonesty. Now, let, let, let's get into Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Claude Monet, my sister who passed away, who is hopefully not passed all the way, but passed all the way to Jesus. Uh, her favorite artist was Claude Monet. Now, when I first got into painting, he was my favorite. Uh, it runs in the blood or something here, but um, he's not my favorite anymore. As years have gone by, uh, you, you'll you see my hierarchy here. Uh, I, I like Peter and Isaac are my top two guys. As a matter of fact, Isaac is now the number one. He started out uh, as one of the lesser known artists online. Now he is probably the fastest growing artist. I always liked his paintings because there was something about him. He, he, he kind of, I call him Mr. Scenery. In other words, he's not really necessarily a great painter. He's just Mr. Scenery. And, and Monet is good at that too. This is another good job by Mr. Claude. My grandfather's name was Claude. And Mr. Claude here is, not my grandfather, but the, Mr. Claude Monet came to the United States from Vive la France. And he's probably the most influential painter in history. He's like Mozart. Some people are the most influential people of all time. And when it comes to art and creativity, and you have to say this guy is most influential. And he, he represents God's creation in a perspective that he demands this personal, which is cool. However, sometimes we might say an impressionist might be a little too personal and not enough realism. Now, uh, from, from my fan perspective base, right? I'm a semi-realist in, in general. But I do like a lot of realism of creativity. So, and, and uh, in individuality 
and uh, idiosyncrasies and so forth. Let's move on. Now, obviously, for those of you who know Monet, this is one of his best paintings. Um, this shows you that he could, he could have been one of the best painters of all time in terms of semi-realism. He usually doesn't do his sky very well, but everything else is usually beautiful, precise, and colorful. Here, here I see some work here that is stunning here. I would consider this a masterpiece. Let's move on. Um, and, and, and one reason this is because every time he gets into realism, uh, it's absolutely stunning to me, which tells me he could have been one of these good type painters that, that, we, that, I, that most people rate very highly in terms of beauty in classic 18th, 19th century art. Remember, I'm an 18th, 19th century guy. Uh, I, I tend to gravitate towards these years, and it's just the way it, it, it's turned out. I do not have any. I do not have time for this anymore. I will put up forty something or fifty painters. I'm going to shut down, and I will never go back to this again because I don't have time. Um, but I will refer back to these because the work that I've done has what they call paid off, or or it has brought forth some profit. And I think that. Uh, looking at these paintings and talking about Jesus and how he created all of this and giving him the glory for the beauty I'm looking at. And one more note before we move on. Each one of these painters, they do things a little differently, and that's what I really like about them, looking at the beauty of God's creation from their own little personal color palette canvas perspective. And I, I just can't say that enough, and let's move on because... That, this, this, this is a stunner here. Um, this is without a doubt to me a masterpiece in my opinion. But you know, this is showing me what he can do. Here we have one of his light paintings, which he, he is Mr. Light in many ways. I call him Chroma Luz, which means color light. He is Mr. Color and Light on many levels. Um, one of the best painters who reveals light than anyone uh, that I have ever seen. And uh, let's move on. This one is not necessarily a, a painting of any special note. Um, here, here again, we have uh, where, you, where you're wondering, is he a realist painter, painter or is he a painter of uh, impressions? Well, he's right there in the middle there, and he likes to do that. He likes to be in the middle. And let's go to another song here as we talk about trust and obey, which means to put confidence in that which is commanded of you. And that which is commanded of you is to put your confidence in kindness and your confidence in care and your confidence in truth. And that's what you were commanded to do. That's what that song means, to put it in a more clear fashion uh, to understand for everybody uh, involved here. Let's go to Go Tell It on the Mountain that Jesus Christ is born. We just looked at that. Let's move on to, um, we just talked about I Found a Friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Savior like a shepherd lead us. He shall lead his flock like a shepherd. And we left off on, I think, For the Beauty of the Earth. That's one of the uh, songs we left off on, another American classic. And this is the key song for this year, for the past year and a half. The key song, the key, the key song for this ministry has been for the beauty of the earth. That has been the key song, and and, and there's, there's a reason for it. Let me share it with you. For the past year, and, and, and just a little longer than that, I don't know the exact date, but we have focused on how beauty is God. How when you go to heaven, all you're going to have is beauty with no ugly anymore. See, see, peace is beauty. That's the point. Color and peace and light are God. God has nothing to do with the devil or Adam's sin. Nothing. That's why we're pushing this beauty angle here uh, really hard right now because we have all of these people online talking about the beast, how, how, how bad it's going to be, and how people are suffering. And, and we're, we're very sensitive to that. We have some videos out on what's going on right now. But I've decided to really focus on you finding peace through beauty and using the hymns and using music to get you to focus on where you're going, not where you are. 
because I'm not going to let us forget where we are. We have a lot of videos here that are addressing where we are time-wise in, in reference to the rapture. In other words, I have been focusing on the beauty of the rapture, but not so much what's going on before the rapture. Now, I'm going to be going to book 66 here, where we go through the rapture, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on pre-rapture. That's already planned. Uh, that'll be done probably in the month of May. I already know what I'm going to do in this ministry, and we plan to cut out a big chunk of time for beauty, and we, we, let, up, we let up on it in January and so forth, and then we're right back to it now in April. We're right back to talking about everything that's beautiful that's coming to you. And if you want to go to number seven in this ministry, which is doing very well right now as far as listeners go, viewers. Because a lot of people want to get into beauty. They don't want to get into the beast every day uh, online or, or uh, in reference to uh, the weird things going on there. What they want to know is something concrete. What, what, what I share with you in number seven here is that which is concrete. I don't have seven out here right now, but I will be getting it out again as we really focus on number seven here a lot, which is, what are the things you're going to get? Where are you going with all of this? And this is what I think you should spend a good share of your time. Now, recently, we have spent the lion's share of our time focusing on that. You're going to get a stone that's white with your name on it. You're going to, and Jesus is the only one that knows that name. You're going to get a, a, a river to drink from. You're going to have a tree with fruit on it. You're going to walk along streets of gold. We need to talk about this. And as a Bible teacher for now, 40-something odd years, off and on doing regular K-12 teaching here in compulsory education here in the United States of America, I find myself gravitating on, on, on more and more as to positive stuff. That's why I'm really shoving these paintings out. Because you, a lot of people need to stop, slow down, and smell the roses here. That's, that's, that's my job here. To get you to stop, get your glossary out, start learning your Bible, quit clowning around some of you out there. You know, you, 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 you know movie stars, you, you know uh, uh, rap, whatever, you know people out there. It's time for you to start knowing Jesus now, see? It's time for you to start knowing your Bible. It's time for you to start knowing your dictionary. That's what it's time for. That's, that's what we're doing. This is a heavy basics ministry right now. We're, we're, uh, we just had some Bible study with Pastor Tom, who just passed away, my buddy. And uh, we, we are in a position right now where, where we, were having, we were having Bible study and people didn't even know the basics and, and was just kind of a waste of time. In other words, they wanted to watch basketball after we had Bible study during COVID, for example. And they didn't want to watch uh, their Bible study. They, 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 they forgot their dictionaries or whatever they had to start learning. And this is not good. Because love prioritizes. When you love God, He knows you love Him because you're going to prioritize Him. If you don't prioritize me, you don't love me. No matter what you tell me. You can flap your jaws or the cows come home. Until you prioritize me, you don't love me. I learned that from my parents who were home every night. So I know what love is. I know, I know that real love, agape, high love, number one in this ministry, is not a clown affection. It's not phileo storgo or, or phileo hedo or, or, or phileo forno or, or phileo uh, zuo or, you know, phileo bio. Or, it, it, there is no like me in the church. You, 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 you're going to get chucked if you think you can come in the church and like Jesus and the brethren. If you like them a little, you, you will be discarded in time. You don't have to spend your whole day on Bible study like me I, as a Bible teacher. I have to spend most of my day on Bible study. That's just the way, I, that's what I have to do. I'm committed to doing that. It's my office. I don't know what your office is. God usually gives people offices of the Holy Spirit to function toward the building up, the planting and watering of Christians. Now let's move on and we get back to 
to, to uh, Monet here, and I wanted to let you know what's going on in this ministry. It's very simple. We repeat almost this, we, the same thing over and over again. So for those of you who follow along here, you should pretty, pretty soon you'll know the playlist. Pretty soon you'll know that there's popcorn available here on art and beauty, that we have April showers where I'm teaching you how to put concepts together. You'll, you'll know that there's hymns here. You'll know that I have my own praise music, which you might call joyful noise. <laughs> You know, we have a playlist updates regularly that, that you can click to let you know how the playlist is doing. Okay, there it is. There's the playlist. Now, I just added Bible books where I'm going to give you specific Bible books lessons, okay? That's all, that's all we do here over and over and over again. Because people aren't paying attention, I can tell by the viewership and the length of time that people are viewing the videos. So I have to repeat things in order to get people on the ball here. A lot of people need to kick in the pants because they're, 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 they're energizing themselves for things in the world and they're not energizing themselves for sound doctrine and living bread, which they need to eat. And I'm here to push on your table and tell you to leave it alone and eat it. That's my job. Now let's get back to Monet, which was my sister, Claudine's favorite painter, and he's obviously one of mine. He's on my list. I've been studying painting for years, and I'm giving you my favorite boys, as you might say. These are basically my favorites. Now there's a lot more guys out there I don't have time for. I put down Sargent here. I may not have time for him. I put down Canatello, the famous Italian architect painter. I, I, I don't think I'm going to have time for him because I have to shut this down and give a few of my paintings and share them with you, and shut down. Because we, we have to focus on a lot of Bible scriptures here. Right now we're spending a lot of time talking about uh, paintings and how beautiful they are. We're going to shut down shut that down, and we're only going to go in the future to beauty related to the things coming to you. We're, we're going to hammer home these things. I was talking to a TV preacher uh, associate here in California years back, and I mentioned that the, the, book of, the book of Revelations has your future in there, and he didn't know any of the future, and he was 75 years old. He didn't really know any scriptures pertaining to what he's going to get in heaven, because that's what the TV world does. You're, you're basically a plastic individual. You really don't know the Bible. You really don't know where you're going. All you know is a few scriptures that pertain to you being happy and being a spoiled child, so to speak, and that's all you know. You're not really in the, in the know. And, and until you focus on where you're going in terms of, 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 of Psalm 17, Revelation 19, where, where you're going to put on a robe of righteousness and you're going to shine with the glory of Jesus Christ, it's not your glory, it's His glory, and you're going to be covered, and no one will ever mention anything you've ever done wrong ever again. And that's your future. And, and if, if hang around people who don't talk this way, after a while, it's time to either chuck them or get them going. There's only two methods, there's only two things to do. With people who are not going to grow into maturity and, and put on everything good in Christ Jesus, as Paul told Philemon. Okay, dude, dude, you're not putting everything on. You're not talking about the blessed hope. You're not talking about being with Jesus Christ. You're not talking about taking up your cross and following Jesus. So what, what we need to do is we need, we need to either get on the ball or get out, kind of. That's, that's, that's what happens. You know, that, that's why Jesus is doing this in the book of Revelation. He's knocking on the door of the church in someone's house. Why is he knocking on the door? Because they're not love active. They're not listening to the commandments. They're not teaching the commandments. They're having a circus in the church or a circus in their home. Their Bible's collecting spider webs, and all they know is entertainment from Hollywood or something. And the point is that that's what's happening in our current generation, but it's always been that way, where the mass is going to knock on the door, are you busy? Are you really loving me? See, that's the, that, that's the essence of what's going on. Okay? And we, we have a litmus test to find out who's who. We can simply listen to the words of your mouth, which will reveal the state of your heart. I can find out where your, where your mind is. Out of the abundance of your heart, you're going to share and tell me who you are, where you stand. Okay, Let, let's get back to Monet. Now, this is one of the most amazing paintings I have ever seen. Because anybody who hangs around the water, the beach, and so forth, you'll know that the light seems to change near the water. 
this gentleman here is giving you light, uh, like, uh, light is the key to everything. This is why Mo Monet is, is, is on my, one of the reasons he's on my list. Because he shares light like nobody's business. And Monstead also shares light a lot, a, a lot of light. Mr. Frosty, Mr. Painter, I call him. Uh, he, I, my number one painter, Peter. I, I build my foundation of painters of his glory on Peter, which means the, the, the little rock, and, and, and I'm going to build this house of humans who are living stones in this house. I'm going to build it with Peter over there, and that's what I did with my collection. And I know that Peter, since I've studied painting for a long time, he has a couple of paintings where he backslid or something. I think he was a Christian. He painted his lady friend with a cross or something, his sister. They're, they're, they're cross people. I think he backslid on a couple of paintings. Of course, we're not going to show those, but, you know, he, he stuck his hand in the cookie jar, so to speak. Let's get back to Monet. Now, both of those gentlemen are very good with light. Also, my mystery painter from Spain, I'm going to show you he's good with light. My favorite Spanish painter, I can't give you his name because I don't want you looking him up. But, and I collected his paintings years ago, but his paintings are so interesting that I decided to add him in spite of the fact that we can't really look him up anymore. Um, but I, we, we will look at his paintings and talk about light, okay? Now, let's get back to Mr. Light here, Mr. Chroma Luz. That's Mr. Color and Light, Mr. Monet. This is wonderful stuff here. Um, uh, I really, really enjoy his, his ability or his work with light because Jesus Christ is light. In this ministry, number 12 is light, where I talk to you about how light, light, it has color. Inside of light is color. Inside of the Lord is color. Inside of the Lord is a person of effulgence of love and beauty. Because beauty is love. Without love, there is no beauty. Without beauty, there basically is no love. And when you go to heaven, and you'll see that, that the, the, the New Jerusalem is a very beautiful place because God takes beauty with him wherever he goes. And the only reason things are ugly or dying is because of sin and because of hate. That's the only reason that you've ever seen anything ugly in the dark at all. I've been mentioning this a lot over and over again because I think it bears repeating. You know, that, that number 12 in this ministry, I'm going to get into light uh, later on, but, but that will probably be later on this year. Let's, let's look at what's crowned and with many crowns. And we just heard that, go tell it on the mountain. I found a friend. Let's go to, let's, let's go back to for the beauty of the earth because that's one of the main themes, if not the main theme of this ministry for about a year and a half now. Because we're here to spend a lot of time praising God for the beauty of His creation. And that not only has He given you love supreme, but He's given you eyes to see and enjoy color and design. Because sound is just like color. It's a frequency. And when those frequencies are in harmony, Everything turns into beauty. And when things get out of line, all, all of a sudden, everything gets ugly and dark. Instead of laughter, there's crying. For the beauty of the earth. For the glory of the sun. Start there from the top again. Let's, let's look at those words. The beauty of Father's creation. For the beauty of the earth. This is my rendition. We tie this in with love of the womb. For the beauty of the earth. A nice picture. I have some pictures to share with you. For the glory of the skies. For the love 
which from our birth over and around us lies. This our hymn of grateful praise for the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to thee we praise. This our hymn of grateful praise. I said praise instead of raise. So for the beauty of the earth, we are spending a lot of time here stopping and looking at God's creation. We're, we're, we're stopping time now. And, and I think this ministry is going to help a lot of you. Where, where you're, going to, you're, you're going to stop. You're going to slow down. You're going to stop and look at things. You're going to see where you are. You're, you're going to assess the, the science. Instead of, you, instead of you flying by science and not acknowledging it. Because Christianity is the acknowledgement of science. It is the acknowledgement of reality. And the first reality is that you are a sinner and the Holy Spirit comes to you for sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin because you need to address reality. Judgment because people who do the wrong thing, you're going down. Sin and righteousness. Righteousness is, is you're going to do the right thing, you're going to observe science, you're going to confess reality, then you're going to meet Mr. Reality. And he's going to take you to heaven because you now agree with reality. Now you can go hang around Mr. Reality and you can leave the dope heads and the people who don't know what they're talking about. You can say goodbye to them when you've been introduced to Jesus Christ. He's Mr. Truth. I am the way, the truth. He is science. So when you start agreeing with science, you're going to find a friend, which we just had a song, what a friend we have in Jesus. I found a friend. How did you find that friend? By you becoming a caring person in the church, allowing yourself to become a new you. That's how you meet the friend, and that's how you keep the friend. Because that friend is straight up truth, straight up care. And that's all Christianity is over and over again. The love of the truth and being merciful and caring. Everything is delineated from these concepts. Well, let's continue with this gentleman here as we move on. I'm doing some heavy teaching here. We got extra rest today or something. Now this is this is one of my top 250 paintings that I have ever seen. I have never I, I've seen a lot of paintings in my days as a landscape guy. But I don't think I've seen anything to eclipse this gentleman here. He could have been, and, and let's turn it down for the beauty of the earth. And we'll, we'll go to crown him with many crowns. Now let's go to a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark, another classic from the USA. And some of these, of course, have been popular in Europe and especially in England and a little in France and so forth. Um, England is the second most popular hymn uh, country probably in the history of uh, Western civilization. Let's get going. Jeremiah, are you on fire? We just hit my favorite painting of Monet. This is one of my favorite paintings of all time. As a landscape aficionado, I would have to say that this painting, and I'm just giving you a little quick opinion, I won't bother you with my opinion, but this is one of the top 250 paintings that I have ever seen. Unequivocally, and from a landscape perspective. Remember, when you get the, when you get the portraits and other things, it gets into, you know, abstract art, you know, Picasso, I don't get into that too much at all. Uh, I did like precisionist work. We, we won't get into precisionist work right now. Uh, it was early 20th century, if my memory is correct. But what I like is landscape. And this painting tells me that if he wanted to focus on landscapes, like my other semi-real real, real boys, which is pretty much what we have here, uh, except for Degas, of course, 
who, who was another talented painter who ended up uh, uh, getting into heavy Impressionism. And I wish he would have gotten into more realism. And that goes for um, Renoir also. And, uh, and especially Isaac. In other words, Isaac and Monet, Claude, they're, they're on the same page. Uh, a lot of Isaac's paintings, he wanted to be like Monet or vice versa. Isaac got into realism, and I put him second place because he has a lot of semi-realism. And Monet, if he would have done more of these, I would have moved him up there with Richards, Percy, Gould, and Bierstadt. I would have moved him up there. Those are my main boys. The first eight painters or so in my list, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Everybody up to, up to now are the main boys. They are the painters that I really like to watch the most, who give me a scenery, they give me a scene, and it speaks of Jesus big time. Uh, for me personally, and I'm going to stop sharing that with you because you may not necessarily have that uh, effect on you. You know, you, uh, I don't want to push my... Uh, my personal idiosyncrasies on you. But we're going to look at um, I Need Thee Every Hour coming up. I need thee every hour. And we're going to start with A Mighty Fortress is Our God. As we focus on hymns right now, as we, as we, and we'll get back to some scriptures uh, probably tomorrow or something. We bounce around here. And when I'm done uh, somewhat sometime this year, I, I will probably not record any more videos. Um, uh, we'll have a thousand plus, and that's all that will be available. I do not want to continue uh, um, into infinity with adding videos. What I'll do is I'll review what I've already taught, and then I will chuck the video. I'll probably have some live broadcasts, okay? And I'm, I'm going to shut down, and, and I won't keep the video, because all I'm going to do in the future is review. In other words... This is a basics ministry where, where we focus on reviewing the basics over and over again. We, now we won't do it too much, but we're going to have to do that because I feel led of the Lord to really start hammering home basics now. Basic hymns. Basics of what does grace mean. Let's get away from all the Starbucks Christianity that I see some people I know and known for years. That's basically what they are. And I'm here to help them also. It's time for you to focus. Now, I'm doing this as a pep talk because I'm an evangelist and, I'm a, and I am a, a cheerleader. You know, I, I, I'm not just a Bible teacher. This ministry is a teaching ministry whereby the, we do a lot of evangelism here. We, we perform, you know, we, we, uh, we have Bibles we give away here. Uh, we have times we go help the, help the people downtown or something here. We, we're smoking here. We, we have some talents and we're using them. I'm just sharing with you what we're doing here. We're, we're not bragging about anything. I'm just telling you we're busy. And, and, and I don't like to talk about much what we do here because I do everything in secret. And, and as the Master has commanded me in Matthew chapter 6 and elsewhere to do things in secret, give in secret. Uh, I don't talk about that fasting to you. Those are the Master's commands in Matthew 6. Now, I, I'm stuck on this painting because I haven't seen it in a while. Well, I saw it the other day. But I haven't had time to look at it. This is one of the most moving paintings, and it makes me a little sad. I'll tell you why. I, if this guy would have done this repeatedly, uh, I would have really been happy. Because, as you can tell, I like to see people take me somewhere and have a one-time moment of real people and real flowers and real places that I may not see until the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. In other words, I'm living the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ right now, where there's all peace, there's no harm, everyone's happy, and there's no hospitals. And this is what we're doing here. We're focusing on very positive information here, positive images. And, and it should rejoice your heart. It should make you glad. This should Stopping and thinking about the blessings of the Lord, giving thanks, having times of gratitude. That's what we're doing now. We're, we're, we're thinking about the past. I, I just showed you the painting of, uh, who was that? Mr. Uh, Albert. 
I call him Mr. Mommy because that one painting he did is absolutely beautiful, uh, very real, of, of a child reaching for the mother. This is what we're about here. We have a very small set of stimuli here. I mean, for those of you who are following along, we've reduced the stimuli. We have we have 30 plus hymns we're going to have up here. We're going to listen to them over and over again. We're going to get some of the words out. I've been playing with the words a little bit because I don't have a lot of the words uh, memorized, especially the second verses. But we need to do that probably later on this year. In other words, we're focusing on something and we're not all over the place. I don't want to go online and study the, the beast one day and, and the other beast the next day. And, and, and basic doctrine one day, and then go to Genesis one day, and then talk about outer space, which doesn't even exist, which one Bible teacher I used to rub elbows with in California, he's really into outer space or whatever. I, listen, I, I don't want all of this. I have to screen everything. And I'm teaching all of you out there to start screening things. Stop and slow down. That's part of my job here, is to get you to stop, slow down, Get the basics and start all over again. And that goes for looking at paintings like this where you see Monet giving you a peaceful, loving scenery and that's what he's trying to convey. I've read some of his writings. Uh, he was a very nice guy. I don't know if he's a Christian, but I do know that he appreciated people and we hope that he's saved. Let's put it that way. Now, this painting, as far as I know, is one of the most beautiful paintings I have ever seen because it, it, it brings me realism, it brings me to the place, and, and he's accentuating a, a little here. He, he, uh, he's, he's taking God's beauty and he's letting it speak to you in a wonderful way. Here. Let's move on. This is, without a doubt, uh, one of the top 100, 200 paintings that I have ever seen, especially from my perspective of a landscape, seascape guy. Um, this is totally exceptional. Um, There's it, something about this. Let's move on. There's something about this that is really uh, magnificent uh, in, in terms of letting me see Jesus. I see Jesus everywhere. Now, here's one of the, you might consider mediocre uh, from him, and we're going to move on. This is nice, but I don't want to stop on this. Uh, I do like this in certain aspects, but uh, moreover, it's just kind of a quickie for him. Uh, here's one that we might say is very well done, but we're going to... Let's blow this up. This one has a little blur to it, but once again, I see potential here from Mr. Monet, and the potential is what we saw earlier. What we saw earlier, the earlier painting was, he, he could have given me what I like that I'm a fan of. It doesn't mean that something's wrong with him doing, you know, a little bit more impressionist and realism, because you can see he likes to, he likes to draw a fine line between impressionism and realism, and that's what Isaac liked to do a lot. My number two painter here. He liked to go back and forth a little bit. And of course, that's what I like about 18th and 19th century seascape landscape painters is they like to give you uh, a bend in reality, but it's their own perspective and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not giving you an evil twist. They're just giving you what you might call an impression. And that's why Monet is the most influential painter of all time, probably. I mean, David is very influential, uh, Caravaggio, uh, you know, obviously people like Da Vinci and so forth. Bernini is definitely a very influential artist, especially when it comes to sculpture. But here's my point. My point is, is that these guys are giving their own personality. But let's move on. I'm talking too much. Let's look at some more paintings here. I like this one a lot. This one has a very nice grassy area there that's dry and so forth. And... and this is another classic from him. Um, I don't particularly care for these too much. I like them. Uh, I like his water a lot. Um, but I, I don't really... Um, I like to go through these rather quick, where we call this straight-up impressionism. I still like it, though. Don't get me wrong, though. I, I started out really being a big fan of this. Then I gravitated towards more realism. In other words, paintings like this are borderline A paintings for me. Because... What, what I have is, and, and let, let me share this, what we have is a strong personal painting here, and 
you can't knock it because it's giving you something that realist painters don't give you. See, so you're getting you know a little bit of his personality here, and and that's why you know I would call this an A painting. I don't know if I would call it a, a masterpiece. I'll give this an A just because of individuality. Here we go again. Now Pissarro is famous for these kind of paintings, and he probably got his paintings from Monet. This guy does everything. He he goes all over the place. He paints a lot. He's indoor. He's outdoor. He's uh, um, he's just uh, a cool dude when it comes to for someone who likes to look at paintings. Once again, we're looking at France from a big perspective of the city, and you so you're you're really getting a nice city view, and uh, and he's giving you an impression whereby it looks like the people are kind of moving, and that's what impressionism does. It, it kind of gives you movement. And, and I think that's one reason why he likes this. Once again, this is an A painting. I won't call it a masterpiece, but I'll give it an A because the originality of the ocean is really done very nicely. And, of course, we have the Cliffs of Dover or something here. Uh, I don't know exactly where this is. Let's get some music going as we look at another. I would call this a masterpiece from Monet. This, to me, is a masterpiece. And let's get some music going. Let's get to uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This is my rendition, A Mighty Fortress. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. So this is A Mighty Fortress, and you can listen to it. And some of you are going to have to probably get, well, I have most of the, the, the words up there, but uh, having a hymn, though, at home is not going to hurt you. That's part of my job and my responsibility is to, is to provide all the words for you. But they're on, most of the words are on the, uh, the videos themselves when you, when you click them on. And, uh, and we will, of course, have to push you and I, I'm going to, of course, have to uh, get the hymnal out and go through these hymns with you and go through the words. That, that's part of my job here, kind of. But right now, I just put up sometimes just the first line of, you know, of uh, stanza of words. But let's move on. As we get away from that, as a mighty fortress is our God, is our hope and our anchor in Hebrews, correct? A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark. A bulwark never failing, a helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. When things are working on you, you just relax over there. That your ancient foe is coming after you and harassing you, he will soon crush Satan under your feet. Okay, all that cruel hate is all temporary, especially when you're in New Jerusalem, right? Almighty God, your Father. Let's get back to Monet just for a moment. This is perhaps, I would give this painting top 500 rating probably of all time. I don't know if I can fit this in. No, we can't fit that in. But this to me is top 500 because what we have here is we have a wonderful job on clothing here. This is a top. Here we are, back to another monster here. I seem to have lost him. Now there's Mikolov. We're going to get to him momentarily. What happened to our boy here? What? We seem to have lost our painting here. I know I didn't click it all. We might have to go find it again. Hold on. There's Mikolov. We'll be getting to him momentarily. But we can use this and move over. Something went wrong. Let's see. There we go. Now, you say, Jeremiah, this is one of the best paintings. Well, once again, this guy is not a... He's not a landscape painter. But you just saw that he can do landscape. And now he's doing people indoor to perfection here. 
we're talking face, we're talking clothing. Uh, this is a monster. This is beautiful. And this tells me of the love of Jesus. This tells me that, that God creates beauty and he is the author of everything that's lovely. This is evidently some sort of Asian uh, attire here. And let's move on as this is a monster. Uh, Monet has about 10 masterpieces in my opinion. We've looked at about two or three of them already. Monet's taking more time than I planned. Here we have what I, what I would call an A painting. In other words, how well are you giving me impression work? Uh, is it as good as Isaac? You know, both, both these guys are monsters. This is another nice job uh, of a view. Obviously, impressionist work. Here we have a squeeze painting of color with these flowers, etc. Here he is giving us a building with an impressionist viewpoint. I, I, would, I would consider this a masterpiece. I would consider this at least a semi-master or an A. Uh, we might want to give it a semi. Here we go with another painting that's interesting. Here he is giving us a nice shore view somewhere in France. I don't know where. Maybe Cherbourg or something. I, I have no idea. I think Cherbourg is kind of flat. This is nice. This is this is we might give us an A. Here we go. We might get to a little bit better here. This is this has a lot of unity. Balance. Here again we have a, a cross between real and impressionism, which which is his forte. Not bad. Here we are. He's obviously very good with flowers. He's been hanging around uh, Latour. He's an excellent flower painter. This is beautiful. Here we are with him giving us a half realism and half half uh, impressionism. And I might give this an A. Uh, I, I might give this a semi uh, uh, masterpiece. This is well done. Here again, we have this monochromatic style, which is very popular in a lot of uh, painters. And I have to say, I really do like the water a lot here. The water is what's really done, uh, what you might call to perfection here. That, that, that puts this in an A category and a semi, maybe, uh, what we might call a masterpiece because of the water. This is what I would call a B painting from him. The people in the water is a very interesting uh, situation there. They're vest, dressed in clothing that's not necessarily conducive to staying clean in what they're doing. Now, this here, here's another painting that we have to consider masterpiece material with color. This, uh, ah, you know, this is close to masterpiece work. I, I, I'm going to get this masterpiece quality here. Uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, and of course my mother liked purple. Maybe your relatives, some of your uh, they're, they're really high on purple. If you're high on purple, you, you have to like this. Now, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark, never failing. Let's go to I Need Thee Every Hour. And that's our next uh, hymn here. As we, we, we get familiar with hymns now and, uh, and some of the scriptures that are related to the hymns. I've always considered this a masterpiece. So let's move on. I would consider this very close to a masterpiece because of light. Remember, light is the key. And in this painting, I would have to give this masterpiece or quasi-masterpiece status here. Um, that's just my own rating system. We already have about eight masterpieces from this guy. I would give this an A. Uh, I like the monochromatic brown uh, here. Um, uh, but I'm going to give this an A and move on. Very well done. I like the mood. And um, let's move on. 
because of the, the, the water done here so well, and it matching the, the, the Dover Cliffs, wherever he is, I'm going to give this uh, semi-masterpiece quality here. I, I think this is done very well there. I, I have to give this, uh, and once again, it's based upon originality points and his ability, these, some of these painters, to, to share with you some of the aspects of what's going on and how it hit them. Uh, this is well done, in my opinion. Once again, he, he's doing it again here. Uh, you know, he, he's bordering on masterpiece quality, and he's giving you light in a very strange way here. And I, I have to give this semi-masterpiece quality here. I don't know if I give it masterpiece, but this is very close. Here again, we, th this is, I've always considered this a masterpiece, or at least semi, because it has a lot of things going for it for me. Um, uh, here we're getting into Mikhailov now. Um, wait a minute. Is that Monet or Mikhailov? I got confused here as to who this is. I think this is Mikhailov, but we'll, we'll, we'll t take a guess on who that is. I don't know if this is Monet or Mikhailov. They're, they're, they're blending together. If this is Monet, this is well done. You know, th this is another, you know, quasi-masterpiece, I would say here. I really like that one. Here we are, of course, with what I would easily consider a masterpiece. When you get to originality in painting, and I don't think you do any better than this. I would consider this a masterpiece here. I think I have another version of that right here. I don't think you can beat this as far as uh, what a what a, a, a semi-realist guy, you know, quasi-realist aficionado. I don't think you can touch this in terms of doing any better than this with the light there and, and the, the beautiful dress there. And uh, uh, assuming she's reading a Bible, uh, a, a beautiful bonnet, uh, this glorifies Jesus right here. This is a human being in an ideal circumstance in France. A, a healthy young lady with an absolutely gorgeous dress with probably, hopefully, a Bible in her hand uh, surrounded by these colors of green and so forth. I don't see how you can get, this can get any better than this. How a painter can improve upon this in terms of ideally. In other words, I'm a semi-realist, but I don't mind a lot of uh, impressionism with my realism. It, it, if it's done right, and, and you can tell that uh, that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with that, of course. We can look at that for a while. Now we're going to look at your boy here, Mr. Monet, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about Van Gogh right now because to me this is obviously where Van Gogh probably got his ideas from. This reminds me of Van Gogh's paintings, big time, and I think that. This became the forte of Van Gogh. Now, Van Gogh got into painting the night, interestingly, and cafes, interestingly. And, and so he, he's not just a one-hit wonder. Uh, some of his cafe work and some of his sky work is definitely uh, 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 some of the highest rated originality of all time. Not very much realism, but as far as originality, we have to give that boy some high scores uh, for most most. Um, art fans, okay? Let's go ahead on with um, I Need the Every Hour, Oh Precious Lord. Let's get into that right now. As we, we're on to an hour and a half. We're going to have to shut down here pretty soon uh, because I want to... We might have time for Mikolov. Let's see. I need the every hour Most gracious Lord no tender voice like thine can peace afford. The only way you get peace is from the Prince of Peace. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. This is our life here. Hymns, beauty, and that's all we do here. Scriptures, Blessed Savior, this is 
absolutely stunning in terms of, of, of the ability that what this guy did with, with his creativity, it is stunning for me. I, I, I really find it hard to get through this guy. We're going to move on. And I think he knew that he was ex expressing himself in a, in a way in and in introducing new genres and so forth. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh bless me now my Savior, I come to thee. He said you can do nothing without me, the Master. You can do nothing without me. Put on a servant mind. Once again, we have half real, half, uh, and, and and I can see where Mr. Van Gogh got his best paintings. I think Van Gogh's best paintings are like this, and I really like them a lot. So we'll get to them a little later. Uh, Monet's monochromatic. Most gracious Lord. Let's shut that down, and let's get into getting through with this guy, because we're not moving along fast enough. We've already looked at some of his paintings that are like Pissarro, and of course, we really enjoy looking at, the, at, at a distant view of Vive la France. And so you say you've never been to France? You just, you just went. I'm not saying you actually went, but I'm saying, you, you know, you're looking at a, a Frenchman's view. Perhaps the most famous Frenchman of all time, maybe. Except for, uh, you know, uh, De Gaulle, or... All right, here we go. Now, what, what do we say to this? I'm, I'm going to give this an A. I, I like the, the quick impression of the water. But I'm going to let that go. But I do like that. I, 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 I think that's nice. I, I like the background where he gave you one big flat wall of trees there. I like that. And also, when I look at the people in there, it makes me want to go there and have some Kool-Aid and have some French pastry or something. <laughs> okay, once again, there are too many good paintings in this guy. I would consider this a masterpiece, and I always have uh, a masterpiece. Where you're giving me a, an impression, and you're, you're, you may be the king of impressionism. I see wind, and I see personality here. I, this is really nice. I have to say this is definitely a masterpiece. Once again, it looks like he's going watercolor on us. And if anybody can do watercolor, this gentleman can do it. And we have some hot and cold colors here in stark contrast. And I think it's sweet. I like the yellow in the sky. I would give this... Um, I'll give this a an A. Another A, I like this. I won't give it anything higher than an A. But I do like it. It's not bad. Here we are back to masterpiece quality here. Because of light. This guy, he's taking me to the beach, and I've sensed the water. I, him and, him and Monstead are two. Uh, they, they both belong here, in my opinion, as letting me see clearly the Lord Jesus Christ. He has ordained what you're looking at. And the light is revealing that. And, and that's just my own kind of philosophical perspective here. We've already seen this before. Uh, here we have a famous painting of his that people like. I'm going to go ahead and give this an A. I will give it nothing else. Um, and we'll move on. Uh, some of you may like this style. He's very good at it. Once again, we're back to... Mr. Masterpiece here. I call this a masterpiece. The light here is stunning. I, I, I see light here. He insisted on giving you light most of the time, and I, I appreciate that. I, because number 12 in this ministry is light. Light is everything. It's the source of energy. It is electricity. It's the electricity in you. And of course, Tesla, who, whose father told him to be a preacher, and evidently he didn't do that. He should have been. Let's move on to another M. We're on, 
On Jordan's stormy banks, I stand. Where are we here? Oh, we're still on I need the every hour. Let's go to... Let's go to another hymn. On Jordan's stormy banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye to go where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. Won't you come with me? What a, what, what a, what a perfect painting for this song. Because the promised land is light. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of, of, of Monet. The reason why I have him down a little on the list is because he, he, he got a little too much Impressionism. He doesn't seem to have the volume I want from land and sea and sky. However, he belongs here. He, he, he is a monster. I am bound for the promised land. I put down on Stor Jor Jordan's stormy banks. It's I'm bound for the promised land. Uh, I, I put the wrong words up there. That's okay. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. What a nice painting there of Richards. Uh, Richards is, uh, if you want to see Richards, he's number four in my ministry here on painters. I just looked at one of his uh, landscapes. What an amazing painter. And he, he's an, he was an American. To me, he's the best American painter of all time. I don't, I don't uh, unequivocally, uh, we're, we're, we're not here to worship anybody or anything, but out of all the painters I've seen from America, I have to say Richard is number one for a couple of reasons. He, he did seascapes. He did landscapes. Um, he has some very strange paintings, too, about spiritual things, which... I, I, we might get into later. I can't get off this painting here. It's got to be one of the best masterpieces of all time. Here we have like a color masterpiece here. It, it, and I, I'm going to call this a... What are we going to call this? I'm going to give this masterpiece quality here. Another masterpiece. He's got about 10 that I really like. I consider this a masterpiece here. When women dressed properly, and they had class, and and and, and the dresses were beautiful, and, and Monet is there. There's an interesting juxtaposition in France at this time. There are a lot of very classy ladies, and there are a lot of ladies who are uh, uh, of the other persuasion. Fortunately, he didn't do too many of those, and I think that him and Renoir uh, knew they were doing some wrong things. That's why it's difficult to look at Renoir and some of these painters. I don't want to suggest them to you and then you go look at them and, 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 and see some of their uh, backslidden or, or uh, paintings that are not acceptable for us. I'm going to show you Renoir, but I'm going to give you a disclaimer. The same is for a couple of guys here. Some of my head guys are obviously Christians because they have crosses all over the place. Uh, they backslid on us and, and, and we're, we're very sad to see that. However, we're not Puritanical, but we are Puritans, right? Yeah, Renoir, you can't look at Renoir, and you sometimes you can't look at Monet, but I'm giving you these guys, and, and, and you don't really need to look any further, actually. And I suggest that you probably do that uh, when it comes to war, paintings of people in the world, because a lot of these guys are people of the world, they're very nice people, but we're not here to copy them. Or do I want you to scroll through them? Especially some of you young people, let, let me remind you. Uh, this ministry is delving into, into areas that can get dark quick. And we don't want you doing that. We're taking liberties here. Okay? We're enjoying some people who, who painted and, and have enjoyed God's creation who may not be saved. However, we're going to look at some of their work and we're going to glorify what they did and mention it in terms of what God has contributed. Because God made the woman and God helped them make the dress and the trees. 
not the painter. And we're going to rejoice in what God has done, even though there may be some people. It's, it's like supporting Donald Trump or something. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure Donald Trump is saved at all. I, I get the feeling he's not, but I hope he is. It, I, I'm not going to support him whole hogged, but if I did go vote, I would vote for him, as opposed to the other guy who said it's okay to go to talk to, to children about romance in kindergarten without talking to their parents. I, I would vote for him in, uh, in a heartbeat. That's my point. We support people, but that doesn't mean we support them whole hog. I might vote for a guy for, for sheriff here. I'm not voting him, voting for him based upon him being perfect, or am I voting for him based upon the fact that I know everything about him? But uh, as far as I know, I, I, I think I should support him, or I think I should support her, or I think I should hire him. That's my point, okay? This is, this is a Bible teaching ministry. It's not a, a church, per se. I would never show these images in church. You say, why wouldn't you? Because this is a TV ministry. This is a this is an online ministry where we have it. We have 101 strings here with romance music with scriptures in it. This is a drag them in ministry. This is a ministry that's reach out. That's what we're doing. And, and the best way to reach out is to maybe reach out. That's the point. Okay. You got to reach out to reach out. And I'm enjoying this because this, here's another painting that I would consider an A, uh, a semi-masterpiece. This is well done here. Okay. Here's another nice painting. I'll give this an A. Uh, I do have a, a full p painting of this. Uh, and it, I, I give that close to masterpiece status. Here we have another close to a masterpiece status here. I'm going to give this a quasi-masterpiece status and an A here. To me, this is well done. Um, this is Mr. Impressionism. Uh, he is, in many ways, Mr. Impressionism. I think Isaac gives him a run for his money, as they say in America. I think Isaac will give him a run. Obviously, Shishkin gives anybody a run. Shishi, number three in this ministry. A lot of people will give him a run, you know, as top impressionist. I think Dega gives him a run, his own contemporary. I think Renoir gives him a run for his money, as they say in America here. He's not the only impressionist who knows how to, who knows how to speak to you as to God's creation, which I, I, I rate this guy probably number one. Here's another masterpiece. I, I, you, you just can't uh, get away from this one here. We just looked at something similar to this. Um, uh, I consider this a masterpiece because of originality, and, and I see wind, and I see all kinds of things going on here. So, um, in spite of it being simple, um, it's definitely a quasi, at least, on my list. Here's another one. I'll give this an A. Uh, that's all I'll give this. Um, once again, uh, obviously, the dresses are, at this time, that are popular, are very white, and they have polka dots and so forth for the ladies, and the men are dressed in a very, uh, what, what would you call, sophisticated way. Monet knows a lot of sophisticated French people. That's quite obvious. Here we have an obvious masterpiece, in my opinion, with color. Uh, I would have to give this semi or masterpiece quality. Uh, the purple and the blue there and so forth, this is well done. You can look at this for a while and see the richness of colors that this gentleman is giving you with the light and the shade there. Uh, I would give this, we, we, so we've got about 12 masterpieces from this gentleman already. This is well done. I'll give this an A. Um, I like the leaves here. Uh, the leaves here really uh, are, are kind of reminds me, we just looked at Polinoff, who I call Mr. Leaves. Once again, this guy can paint leaves. They're alive. It's very beautiful leaves here. Here we are back to the beach scene kind of here, the, the water, the, uh, the, the beach light. And, and once again, I would consider this a, a straight up masterpiece. Before I looked at this, and we're back around again. Uh, I would give this masterpiece status right here. This is a wonderful combination of, of Impressionism and Realism. I would give this a, a straight up A. And then I would give it a, I would go higher. Yeah. 
th this is sweet. This one here, I would also consider a quasi master for color. I see fire in the water. What a job this is. Uh, but I won't give it a masterpiece quality. I'll give it an A or uh, color wise, you, you got to give it a high rating. Here we are back to that scene there again with the gal running. And, and we, we, we have to give this a masterpiece, in my opinion. Uh, there's something about this for me. Um, here we have another considered masterpiece. I don't know if I'd go that far. I would give this a quasi. This is well done. It has a nice personal touch to it, and it has to be considered a, a, a very substantial painting, in my opinion. Here we go with an A. We'll move on. Uh, maybe this is France in the winter. We'll give this an A or a B. This might be a B painting of his. I'll give this an A. Um, I'll give this an A here. We'll move on. Because I like this one. This, this is not bad. Here is where we might go ahead and give him an A. I do like the darkness there. Yeah, we'll give him an A here and let it go. Still, uh, still a good job in my opinion. I call this a masterpiece from Monet. I give this masterpiece status. Because it's taut and, and it's simple. I like it. Well done. Back to his standard that he did quite a bit of the boats in the water. I'll give us an A. I like the bright red. Here we have another one that might be considered a masterpiece. I'll call it quasi. That's well done. And, and what, what's nice about this guy is the richness of the colors. He likes to use paint. He must have used more paint than anybody. Uh, I mean, he's using a lot of paint here, and I appreciate that richness. Here we are back to the masterpiece that started the whole ball game. Here we say we're done with him. Uh, we're back to this. It's a little blurry, but it's still a masterpiece in my opinion. And we're going to shut down. And of course, we'll leave with this one, this here, which is one of the top. Easily 250 paintings I have ever seen. This just speaks of Jesus and beauty. Like nothing, nobody's business here. An hour and almost a half, and a half, but that's the way it has to go. When you get to one of these guys, we will start making these videos quick. because I, I need to get going, so uh, let's let, go, let this go. And look at one more absolute beautiful painting here of his which is this lady in this amazing um, Japanese-looking dress here. Absolutely stunning here. And I think it's just top of the line here. Let's let that go. We're done. Jeremiah's going to shut down. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. And we're rejoicing together with you in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you look at some of the detail of how well this guy can paint. Uh, we, we never saw how good this guy could paint. When you look at the detail here, we, 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 we just couldn't really kind of see boots on the ground, what this guy could do. And it makes, it makes me kind of sad. And that's one reason why I've kind of demoted old Claude, in spite of the fact that he has my grandfather's first name. And, of course, um, you, you, you love your grandfather, and, uh, and, and we miss hearing the voice of our relatives, and we pray that they, that, they, that they were counted worthy to enter into the rapture, and you can see them again. That goes for all of them and all of your friends, and the Lord Jesus Christ is in charge of all of this. When he says he's in charge, he means he's in charge, okay? That's, and, and, and although we have criteria that we might assess whether somebody goes to heaven, we're not the doorkeeper. Jeremiah, let's let us let it go. Monet. And I haven't done this in a long time. And I'm enjoying this because I won't be able to do this for, I know, for uh, umpteen, I don't know, months and at a time because I don't have time. But I want to share this with you because this I think this should be a part of your Christian life, that you... Take time to look at God's creation from a G-rated perspective and enjoy 
color, light, design, and that's what we're doing here. Look at the design of this dress here. It's amazing. Okay, that's it. What do we say? Maranatha. That means Jesus is coming, and we're excited about that. That's called the blessed hope. That's the chief crown of our uh, expectation. Uh, what we expect the most here is getting out of here. Now, I have other expectations, which, which is called faithing, and I have other confidences that I believe in, that I'm persuaded, such as history and prophecy, etc. Jeremiah, that's it. I'm going to let you go, because I'm going to go. And we just spread the love of Jesus around, and the, and the ghost of Father, the presence of Father, may it be with you. Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Numbers. Let's go. That's it. Amen.